Well, a couple months back, Linda and I bought this Alpacool T50 compressor refrigerator, 12 volt. Did it work for us? Is it noisy? Does it run off of solar? How did it work on our last trip down to the desert? Well, let's talk about that. Well, cold beer. As you can see, I went all out this time. Well, half the reason we put that solar on top of the roof of this trailer was to run a 12 volt compressor refrigerator. We've been wanting one for a long time. So we finally did a bunch of research and we ended up buying this Alpacool T50. It's uh, rated at 53 quarts. You can see we bought the ones with the wheel, the one with the wheels on the back, back here. It's got a handle on this side that folds up like this so you can tote it around on its wheels. Handle on the other side too so you can pick it up and carry it. And it's a dual zone refrigerator. We've got it set up as a single zone right now. Uh, in eco mode is what we keep it set at. And it's all refrigerator. You can have it uh, be a freezer on one side and a refrigerator on the other. Or you can have the whole thing be a freezer too. Just depending on what you need. We didn't think we don't need a freezer so we didn't run it as such just as a refrigerator. I put this extra insulation in the uh, lid right here and uh, I think it's working pretty good. I just cut it to fit. There's two layers on there. Somebody said they got it felt cold on the lid so we went ahead and did that. The reason we chose this model above the others that Alpacool offers is because of this lid. This lid is pretty foolproof. They make another model that has the lid on the side with a latch and too many people complained that that latch breaks. So I thought, well, we'll just play safe and go with this one. I find that when it's running, it uses about 55 watts, 50 to 55 watts, and it runs about, oh, three minutes every 15 minutes in about 80 degrees ambient temperature. So it's using, I don't know, about 15 watts per hour. And it does have a nice little light on inside. I didn't think this was going to be useful, but it is. You'd be surprised if you're cooking dinner late at night or whatever. This little LED light on here is really handy. It's got a divider that goes in here in the middle. And the refrigerator automatically senses when this divider is in place. When you slide it down, Watch what happens over here. It'll automatically go to dual zone. So now it's reading both zones. And you can set each zone independently of the other. Making adjustments on it is really easy. The first time you touch the adjustment, it shows you where you have it set. After that, you can move it up or down, depending on where you want it. The upper one is for the left side. The right one is for the right side. Now I just put that divider in there. We need to set this. Right now it's set at four degrees, but Fahrenheit. We'll go ahead and raise this up a bit. The one thing they say is that the left side cannot be lower than the right side. So now this will start coming down here. I got it set at what? 22 degrees. Left side cannot be lower than the right side. That says that in the manual. Now this unit does have Bluetooth and it works very well. You can uh, automatically see both the temperature of both uh, sections of the cooler and you can reset it. You can change your settings, your eco to, uh, to max or what uh, battery voltage you want it to shut off at or whatever. You can change it. And with this sitting outside in our driveway, I can actually read it from inside the house. So the Bluetooth works very well. But everything I'm telling you, you can just get by looking online. If you go to Amazon, all the stuff is listed in the bit in the product description. What I think you really want to know is how the thing worked out. Because, you know, we were really looking forward to having refrigeration on this trailer and not having to go get ice anymore. Linda, I can't get her to eat canned vegetables. It's got to be fresh. And when you have a, a ice cooler, that's really difficult to do. So how did this work out? Well, let's talk about the efficiency first, or, or should I say, no, 
Let's talk about how much current it uses. Well, as for current draw, here's the only way I can explain that to you. I don't know if you can read these red numbers on here. They're flashing around. At night when we would go to bed, which when we camp is pretty early, it's like as soon as it's dark, this would be reading around 12.9 or 13 volts. In the morning when I wake up, which was, is just when the sun and the sky is starting to pale, this is down to about 12.6 volts. So it would only go down by about three tenths of a volt at night, running strictly off the single house battery, old house battery. It's uh, about three years old, the battery on this trailer. And that's all it was using. It's very efficient in my book. We didn't have to worry about it running out of power in the middle of the night. It is going to use more current than that if you're running their freezer. Uh, so, uh, like I say, I ran it on eco mode. Set it, I set it at about uh, 35 degrees and we did just fine. I think you could run this very easily with a 100 watt solar panel and one house battery. We have 200 watts on the roof and uh, one house battery, 12 volt battery, and we never got close to uh, using up that battery, even running it all night. It was all right. As for temperature control, it, I found that it'll, it'll keep an average of whatever you set. If you set it at 35, it's going to go from 32 to 39, but it'll keep an average of whatever you have set in here. As for noise, it's running right now. It kind of makes a kind of a purring noise. So we think it's pretty quiet, actually. We did have some trouble with the noise, though. Uh, we saw complaints about it being noisy. Well, one thing to remember is, first of all, it is a compressor refrigerator. It has a compressor inside, which means there's a piston running in there compressing the uh, coolant that's running through this thing. So at first, we the first thing that we noticed was kind of a buzzing noise or a rattling noise sometimes well that turned out to be what's inside sometimes you're getting a buzzing noise and we'd have to open it up and move one of these racks a little bit or something because we we didn't have this center divider in here because we didn't run it as a refri as a refrigerator freezer we were just running it as strictly a um a refrigerator so this you have to take this center panel out to do that well that meant that these racks were loose in here and sometimes you get like a buzzing noise or a rattling noise and it just that's all it was and we'd move something and it would stop so that was the first noise the other noise was there was a loud thump when it was shutting down and that did bother us but you know what that turned out to be <laughs> i hate to say this so look here i'm going to move it I have it sitting on a rubber kitchen mat and I heard other people complain about the loud thump too. Well in my case you can see that that mat's not square and we had one wheel off the back of the mat here so it wasn't sitting even. So it would, when it would start up and shut down that compressor it does shake the, the, uh, uh, the cooler a little bit and it was thumping a wheel on the floor here. As soon as I moved it up so I got all four wheels on the uh, on the mat, that stopped. So yeah, now it just makes a purring noise like it's supposed to. It does have a dB rating of 45 dB. Uh, that's not awfully loud. It's, it seems quiet to me. But for people that complain they put it in their campers and they say it's too loud, if you put your cot next to your refrigerator in your house, uh, and you and you slept there all night, every time that refrigerator comes on, it's going to wake you up. And this makes about the same amount of sound as your refrigerator in your home. Well, this is the compressor inside. I thought you might like to see it. So you can see it's just like the uh, compressor in the refrigerator of your home. Now people mention a Danfoss compressor. I don't know if that's a brand of compressor or a type of compressor, but this is what's inside this one. It looks pretty neat. 
these cooling fins are going to have to be cleaned periodically. If they get covered in a layer of dust, it's really going to decrease the efficiency. But it's just a matter of removing uh, all five screws and dropping this panel down. And uh, you can get in there easily and clean it. You can see this runs on 12 volt and 24 volt. Now lately I was, I've been watching, uh, I watch a lot of videos on uh, tech stuff, but um, two big channels on YouTube and uh, two people that I actually, I do trust. Uh, they have a lot of subscribers, but on two separate occasions they each mentioned that if you didn't have a regulated 12 volt power supply, it wouldn't run a 12 volt compressor for refrigerator. And I, I, I tested that out. And I ran this thing because this Blue Eddy, the new Blue Eddies have a um, 12 volt regulated 12 volt power supply here. Well, this is the older model Blue Eddy and it doesn't have that. So I plugged the refrigerator into it um, last night, or no, I'm sorry, yesterday morning. And after 18 hours, I finally unplugged it uh, and it ran the refrigerator just fine, even though the voltage slowly drops. The thing is that this refrigerator, and a lot of them like it, have a low voltage cutoff on them. So you don't drain the power down or drain the battery down on your car below a level where you can start your car. And like on this one, on, on this refrigerator, this T50 here, this Alpacool, you can set that at 12 volts, 11 and a half volts, and 9 volts to choose how low you want it to go. Normally, you wouldn't set that below 12 volts if you were trying to protect a lead-acid battery or an AGM. On a lithium battery, you can set it on down to the 9-volt setting, which is what I did. And it ran it just fine because the protection wasn't on the Blue Eddy. The protection was on the setting on the Alpacool. It was going to protect itself by shutting off. Well, it was going to protect your battery by shutting off at 9 volts, which it never did get down to 9 volts after 18 hours. It was down to 10 and a half. Anyways, it does run just fine. And that stands to reason, too, because these refrigerators are designed to run off the cigarette lighter in your car. And that's not a regulated 12-volt power source. That power, that power uh, gently drifts down over time. And it'd be the same thing if you were plugging it into the battery on your trailer into the cigarette lighter inside your trailer same thing that voltage is going to slowly drop down so these coolers will run just fine on a non-regulated 12 volt power supply so how will this stand up over time well we're going to find out because this trailer lives sitting on the floor of my trailer my single axle trailer bouncing down the dirt roads and all it's sitting on is this rubber pad down here so we paid for this out of our own money, $369 off of Amazon. And if it craps out, you'll be the first to know after me. We'll see. So what's my overall opinion? We like it a lot. <laughs> Cold beer, no watery ice to deal with. Yeah, we like the refrigerator a lot and it is working very well for us. So there you go. Anyways, hope this helped. Please like, share and subscribe and we'll see you around.